Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah. This is, uh, well, kind of analog resurgence, but today I'm doing something a little bit special, and instead of focusing on a single topic this week, I'm gonna do a little bit of a tour to kind of go through all the random stuff that I have and the cameras and the gear that I have accumulated over the past number of years of getting into shooting analog formats. <laughs> Let's get started. This is kind of my stuff that I've accumulated between working in a couple of film labs, hunting through thrift stores, and you know, just stuff. This is some developing stuff. So we have home developing real tanks. So these are for 35 or also 120 in combination with these Patterson tanks. So these are what I use for home developing. So you can use these in the light once you load the film in the dark. Once you get to a size like this, you can use attachments. This is a four by five large format film holder. And so that's sheet film. Kind of jumping on from that, I also have the old school way less easy to use developing tank here. The metal reels are usually what people say are much harder to load and they kind of are. I learned by using the metal reels. It likes to leak on me, which is way less fun. So these Ziploc bags are rolls of Super 8 film. And these are all things that I can actually project. So mostly black and white, but roll of ectochrome in there as well. Older ectochrome. Home movies kind of over the summer is beach trips starting as far back as high school when I got my Super 8, first Super 8 camera. This, the Cinemax Macro C-802. This is my very first Super 8 camera from my high school because they weren't using it anymore or I decided that they weren't gonna use it anymore. It takes a really old school battery for the light meter and in the recent years I've had some trouble getting it to work. Uh, another Super 8 camera and this is a Sankyo ES44 XL. It does have a single frame exposure option so I can do one frame at a time if I wanted to do some stop motion animation. So the other camera that I have is one that I've highlighted before as well. This is my Yashica Electro 8 and I love it. I love it so much. It's usually my go-to one right now because it's just easy to use. It's got just enough features that I like in it. Old school Bell and Howell Super 8 too, which just like pops open on the side like that. Polaroid cameras. The thing about Polaroid cameras that I've kind of talked about before is that I like them. I like them a lot. They're not hard to find. This one, uh, the Sun 660 actually is my first, I think I paid like $4 for this at a Goodwill by my old apartment in Toronto. That's Polaroid camera number one. Keep track, put up a counter. We've got some more Super 8 film here. These are just kind of storage, but if I don't have a scan, then I'll take them to the lab to get digitized. And this one is for an entire music video shoot that I helped out with. These are 16 millimeter negatives. So we're getting into 16 here. Some just different stuff from over the years of experimenting. Some good, some bad, just nice to, to have shot like a decent chunk on the format. All this 16 millimeter stuff here is actually positive like prints and reversal stuff that I can watch and thread up on a projector. And that's always fun is just being able to watch it on the projector. So this is a later one. This is the Polaroid One Step Express. Kind of standard, again, just a 600 camera. This is a Kodak Pocket Instamatic 10. So this is a 110 film. Polaroid that came out of one of the Polaroids. That doesn't count, that's not another Polaroid camera. This is my Impulse. The Impulse is nice as well. Just click down flash. Uh, again, a 600. But yeah, that's a great model as well. You can get ones that have uh, uh, sonar autofocus and the sonar unit is just here and you can get them in bright blue as well. The flip flash for the Kodak instant camera, the only camera that is a Kodak instant camera. One of these, these are really useful to have, especially if you don't have a dark room somewhere. This is a change bag. So it's completely light tight and I can zip it up and do some like loading development tanks in complete darkness, just in a bag. You can get bags or you can get even tents for like loading motion picture cameras. A light table, LED light table. The brand I have is a Huion. I'm probably not saying that right, but it doesn't matter. And that's what I use in the videos for being able to look at some of the negatives that I have. A one, 600, Polaroid 1 600. You can find a lot of these ones as well. This one is broken. Random old school flashes, chunky flashes, little flashes. Ugh, I'm drowning in a sea of this stuff. Another one, uh, 1 600 that again pops down, pops up. This one does work though. This is made by Ilford. It's actually a little contact printer. You can use it to make black and white slides from black and white negatives. So this is just a one step autofocus. Just another classic looking one. Actually, this one, this one's my first Polaroid camera. The one I bought at Goodwill is the first one that I ever 
shot film through. Rolls of slide film that I have not mounted because I'm out of slide mounts at the moment. Negatives that I have not organized. These are four by five negatives. The binders that I have are these nice archival binders. The black binder that I have is for all of my negatives. And this is just like over the years, archiving my negatives and storing those. And then I have two white binders and I use these for all the slides that I shoot and I mount. Really cool sheets for these as well for individually mounted slides. Another one, identical model, one step autofocus. We're getting there, we're getting there. Dummy test film, these are four by five. I just use them for testing stuff. Some boxes of really old, expired black and white four by five film from the 1970s that is super expired and I like to shoot and develop and it usually gives me like weird, wild, like textures and results. One step models, this is the Pronto. I like this one. This one has a nice kind of big lens on the front that you can turn. Big red button, it just says pronto! Exclamation point, love it. A brownie from the early 1900s by Kodak. Just a little box camera, got the nice little leather strap on it still. 35 millimeter SLR, this is a Minolta X700. This is also a pretty popular camera for just kind of anybody who really wants to get into the format. Sometimes the capacitors in these old cameras can go, especially on the X700. A half frame camera, this is the Samurai X3.0. Instead of a full normal 35 millimeter frame on the negative, it should shoots half the size of that, but it shoots it up and down. And it kind of looks like a camcorder from the 90s. It's got such a bizarre design to it. The rainbow. The first one-step camera that was introduced, the SX70 one-step. This one also does not work. More 16 millimeter. These are in the actual boxes that you can buy film in. And again, this is stuff that I can project. These are prints. This is a film extractor. This is really useful actually. And you can use it to extract film that you've rewound into a 35 millimeter canister and pull the end back. We use these a lot in film labs for extracting and then cutting and then threading them up through a film processor. The Sonar One Step. This one has autofocus. The autofocus can be a little bit sketchy and I've definitely had a model where it doesn't really work. These are movie trailers. If you were to unroll it, you would see frame by frame uh, an entire movie trailer. I actually haven't gotten to project these before because I don't have a 35 millimeter motion picture projector. Some more 16 millimeter stuff. This is actually from when I was in college and this is stuff that we got done at the lab and we projected up. Lo and behold, I got to keep the, the film because nobody else in the class really was super interested in film. Where are they now? Not and not doing this, not in my videos. My Sonar SX70, which is the first one I ever got. I reskinned it once I got it. Uh, it was kind of gross and peeling. This is my Canon AT1, and I like it a lot. It's usually just my go-to for just basic, nice, easy to use camera for shooting 35 millimeter when I want to. A disc camera. When I made the Kodak disc film video, I didn't have this. I found this while I was making that after I shot it at a thrift store for a few bucks and I picked it up. And lo and behold, it is as kind of cheap and crappy as disc cameras were. The classic, the first model, the first SX-70. Of course, I have a bunch of these flash bars kicking around to throw on them as well. Also one of these mint electronic flashes that just take AAA batteries. I would definitely recommend seeking out one of the mint ones. Some point and shoots. This is the VR35 Kodak 35 millimeter point and shoot metalist camera that has a little bit of juice in it. This is a Canon SureShot Zoom Owl. You can actually auto detect quite a wide range of film ISOs, which is kind of nice. The Spectra One, you'll get ones that just the aging motors will not spit up the film for you. It will not give me good results. My Canon SureShot Owl, I use this pretty consistently for the past couple of years as my go-to kind of point and shoot camera at parties and just hanging out with people. It's nice. An underwater Canon uh, SureShot WP-1. This one does not work actually. It's a little bit glitchy when I put batteries in. The Spectre 2, this one's actually really nice. This one's always given me pretty good results. So I would always recommend the Spectre 2 over the Spectre 1. This is something I picked up at a thrift store about a year ago. It's a National Film Board movie on 16 millimeter film. It's just like a series of different old stamps, has like weird music and voiceover. This is a notebook from when I was working at one of the film labs dealing with motion picture stuff. So this is chemical stain pages with like different stickers and stuff on there from film cans. Chemical mixtures and notes about machines and stuff about film and just like a huge amount of information. The ProCam. My Spectre ProCam is my favorite Polaroid Spectre camera. Wide angle lens, great looking 
taken images, I love it. This is my Graflex. This is my four x five camera, which I picked up a few years ago at a camera show. So these were press cameras and these were what a lot of reporters would use. You can get different holders. This one is called the Graphmatic holder. It can hold six sheets of film as opposed to a normal holder, which just holds two. And they always just kind of slot into the back on these four x five cameras so then you can expose your film. This is not a Hasselblad. I do not own a Hasselblad, but this is the Soviet Union equivalent to a Hasselblad. And this was kind of a nice cheap option to be able to try it out and experiment with shooting that kind of film. And it's wonky and kind of glitchy. It is a Kiev camera. It is what I use whenever I'm shooting six by six medium format film. These take the peel apart film that Polaroid used to make and Fuji also really recently used to make, except they've discontinued it. Uh, they're kind of classic looking cameras as well. My Super 8 projector, I'm gonna talk about this in a little upcoming video as well, but as a sneak peek, this is my personal Super 8 projector that I use. It's nice and compact and has never given me any problems. This is something that I made. This allows me to shoot Polaroid instant film on my 4x5 camera. And so I made this using a impossible project product from a couple years ago that would allow you to shoot cell phone pictures onto instant film. And it just goes on the back here. We'll take a load of 600 Polaroid film or SX70 film, and then I can just shoot film onto it through my large format camera. This one also just a different model, but basically the same, but you would pull the film out and you would wait a few seconds while it develops and then you peel it apart. Gonna do a video on that. This is my bucket of developing stuff. So I have uh, thermometers, funnels, and uh, some old jugs of chemicals. I have some black and white HC110 developer, random bottles of different things, notebook of just developing times and stuff like that. Maybe the ultimate highlight of my collection of stuff here, this is my 16 millimeter Bolex camera. So this is not the fanciest or most expensive Bolex model out there. It allows me to shoot 16 millimeter whenever I want to. It has a nice turret of lenses on the front. It is beautiful and I love it. And I'm gonna highlight this in an upcoming video as well. Not just the Bolex, but also a bunch of different 16 millimeter cameras out there. Light meter is spot light meter and a handheld light meter like this one. And I'll talk about those ones in the future as well, but those are great to have and super useful. This is like gold right now. This is FP100C, the peel apart film for the Polaroid cameras that take pack film. This is pack film and Fuji has discontinued it and it's going up in price. It's slowly disappearing, but I have stockpiled my own little collection of it. Um, you know, don't tell anybody that I have this. Don't tell anybody that I showed you this. I have a nice little Bolex motor here and this allows me to do longer shots if I plug it in or if I rig it up to a battery. Uh, the Captiva, I'm gonna do a video on the Captiva. Don't buy a Captiva, they're useless. Polaroid invented these and there's nobody making the film for these anymore. I had a pack of film with a battery, so I've tested it out. None of the film came out. I think that's the last Polaroid camera I own. The last piece that I'm really gonna show off really briefly is my Kodak 16 millimeter pageant projector. These are just amazingly nice, like beautifully well-built machines. You just thread up your 16 millimeter and be able to watch that stuff in your own home, which is again, just a great experience, just like projecting anything. And these are just like great to have as part of the collection. Hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that camera tour and got a kick out of all the random stuff that I've just kind of picked up over the past few years of shooting analog formats. Yesterday, I launched the Analog Resurgence Patreon in order to hopefully help support the channel as things continue to move forward. This is the first video I've done since launching the Patreon just yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some Patreon shoutouts for the amazing people who've already jumped onto that and supported the channel already. We have have Benjamin MacArthur, Nakia Jones, Audreas Radzaveticus, which I hope I'm saying right, and Abby Henderson. So if you want to support Analog Resurgence and get your name on some of these videos that I've been making and even check out some extra content that goes along with all the stuff I've been putting together, then just scroll on down and check out the Patreon link in the description of this video and it'll take you over there and you can check that out. And thank you guys so much for watching this and continuing to watch this and I'll see you guys soon.